This video will show you how to make these cedar recipe book holders. They make great gifts for friends and family and can even be sold online. And be sure to stick around to the end to see my results selling these so far. A lot of my builds involve cedar fence pickets. This build will use less than one picket, which I can pick up locally for about $3. I'll be making a pair of these recipe book holders in this video to showcase a few different style options you can go with. We need to start by getting a nice wide board. I like to make these with the final dimensions at eight and a half inches wide and at least 11 inches tall. We will make these at eight and a half by 14 inches. To do this, cut two full width pieces of your picket at 15 inches long. Now, take these boards over to the table saw to clean up the edges. Make sure the blade is square to the surface to ensure a good seam when we go to glue them up. Glue up the two boards side by side and allow them to dry for at least a few hours. While that is drying, I'll show you how to make the handle. The reason I like making these 8.5 inches wide is that it's the same width as a standard sheet of paper. Fold the paper in half lengthwise. Now draw half of a handle up to the folded edge. Use scissors to cut along the line you just made. And when you unfold the paper, you should have a perfectly symmetrical template to trace onto your board. Let's jump back to the board now. Clean up the squeezed out glue. I used a cheap, sacrificial chisel to do this. After the bulk of the glue is removed, sand the entire board smooth with 80 or 120 grit sandpaper. Now we will cut the board to width. At the table saw, set the width to 8.5 inches and pass the board through. Now it's time to use the template we made. The template should be the exact same width as your piece, making it easy to align with the edges. Trace the handle pattern onto the board. The next step is to safely cut the handle out. I'm going to use my work table to clamp it securely and remove the bulk of the material. After a few minutes, I've got a rough cut out, getting it pretty close. Ideally, you should finish this up with a disc sander so you can be very precise on the amount of material being removed. I cleaned up the edge on my router table, which also works. Sand the edges smooth either way. So now we have the backboard to our recipe book holder. There are three more pieces to make to complete it. We'll start with the bottom two for holding the book in place. These will be identical at eight and a half inches long and two and a quarter inches wide. After cutting, give a quick sand and then get the glue back out. I'll be using a combination of glue and these one inch deck screws to fasten everything together. I'm counting on the glue for long-term hold and the screws more for aesthetics. This picture shows how I connect the three pieces on mine. There are a few considerations here in the design. First, a strong connection to the main board. Second, a wide slot for the book to fit in. And third, screws visible from the front of the piece. Start by positioning the piece and drilling pilot holes with a countersink bit. The wood is pretty thin, so be sure you're drilling the hole deep and wide enough so your piece doesn't split. Don't add the screws yet. We will add glue first. So head to your clamp storage area and grab every clamp you own. Spread glue on the piece, position on the backboard, and drive in the deck screws. You can apply additional force with the clamps. Repeat this process for the other board. On to the final piece. Use the remaining portion of your cedar picket to create the kickstand. The ideal angle for these seems to be somewhere between 22.5 and 31.6 degree angles based on my testing. I ended up going with 25 degrees. Square up the edge of the remaining board. Use your miter saw to cut a 6 inch section at that angle. Find the center of your board, glue it up, and clamp to the best of your ability. Do one final sanding to clean up any marks that you may have created on the piece. You could call it done there, but you could also add a finish if you'd like. I like using Danish oil with a natural color on cedar. It adds a little bit of a wet look and deepens the natural red of the wood. Allow that to dry overnight. The final step I do when making these is to use my laser etcher to add my logo to the back. It just takes a few minutes and adds to the professionalism of the piece. You can modify these in several different ways to suit your style. From the handle to the finish, the personalized etching, or even the wood selection. Do what you think makes these look great. So that concludes the build portion of the video. Now let's talk about selling them. I listed this one without the handle on Facebook Marketplace for $35. Here's the listing and the photos I used. Feel free to model your listing after mine. I made sure to highlight the cedar wood construction, locally crafted and small business aspects of this to give a sense of the time and attention to detail that was put into the work. After three hours, I had about 10 clicks on the listing, but no messages. 24 hours later, I was up to 35 clicks on the listing, but still no messages inquiring more. Be sure to check the pinned comments to see more updates on this. Drop any questions you may have in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any new content. Catch you in the next one.